hi, I need somebody to come let me in my apartment. My key's not working. I'm at the door and I cannot move. I've been holding my, my pee. I'm trying to get into my apartment and it's not working. Oh, oh, literally. oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my God. I can feel the... Yo. This is insane. I'm literally about to shit on myself. I almost shitted on myself during Black Mama Month and Haitian Heritage Month. Twelve nine oh one p.m. Guess what released today? Da, 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 da. A la carte. Your 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 sister is officially an actress. <laughs> an actress. All right, Rain. Time's up. No sign of mahogany or shower. Pay me my money. Oh my God, I thought by inviting shower they would be on time. Not with mahogany slow ass driving. Double enough. Do it look like I need your money? No, but on my teacher's salary, I can show you yours. Oh. And what the fuck is this? Make sure my shit is in Harriet Tubman's next time. Um, I'm so excited because it looks so great. Uh, you know, it's just awesome that I got to finally do something that's on my goals, been on my, my set of goals for a while. <sighs> so I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to like review it online, post clips. You know, let everybody know I'm an actress. Today, I had a meeting with a casting director who's really well known. Like, uh, I just like shot my shot, followed her on Instagram. She DM'd me. We've been exchanging, you know, small talk here and there. And like, we had lunch today and I just feel really good about like getting to know her. Um, she does a lot of stuff uh, for the LOL Network, which is owned by Kevin Hart. So I, I really look forward to one day doing something with Kevin Hart. Like he, we're not, bir are we birthday twins? I don't think we're birthday twins, but we're both cancers. So I get him, like I get him, I love him. I love his work ethic. I love what he's been able to do. And if I, I just, I want a career like that. Like I really, really want a career like that. We're one week out from, um, the white clef song coming out excited about that i'm excited about a lot of stuff that white clef has going on i'm i'm gonna stick to white clef for as long as i can okay <laughs> okay like legend shit okay i'm actually on my way to dinner and um i'm actually gonna go um have dinner with sean and an artist that i really love and i think y'all are probably gonna flip when you see who it is hopefully like he won't mind being on camera Y'all, uh, it is 2.17 a.m. I'm back home. So I didn't pull out my camera to show y'all who it was, but I'll just let you guys know. I met August Alsina tonight and he just was so nice. The vibes were so genuine. I didn't want to like, can you look at my camera and say, and say something in my vlog? I don't, I just like sometimes like when those vibes be genuine, like you just, you stay in that vibe. And there'll be other moments where I can, you know, vlog and like there'll be other moments, but like moments where somebody's really talking to you and like getting to know you, like, and you're getting to know them, like, it's good to give that person your undivided attention and not make them feel like, oh, by the way, can you, you know what I mean? Like, and somebody like August Alcina, like, I'm pretty sure he's so used to that. Somebody always putting a phone or camera in his face. So I didn't want to do that. You know what I mean? But then I'm like, dang, I didn't get the content. <laughs> no, but it was it was worth more to me to spend that time with him than to like, oh, can you say something, you know, for my vlog? And he was so nice. And he was so like happy to meet me, which was so weird to me because it's like yours, like you are like August Alcina. Like, why are you so happy to meet me? Like, you know, I'm so excited to meet him. Um, but it's just nice when people when people you didn't know fuck with you, fuck with you. And it's like, you know, like, and, and you know, he made certain comments to me about like, 
just me standing my ground and on certain things and me having a voice. I'm like, dang, you know, it's it's just always it's always a wonderful thing to get praise for being yourself. Like it's it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful feeling. And I'm I'm happy like that no matter what, I'm always myself. I, I you know, and you know, that people appreciate that especially in this world it's just so so fake sometimes so i'm happy that i had that moment you know all right it's 2 19 i'm about to get in the shower tomorrow is friday it's a lot of shit i need to be that i needed to do this week that i just didn't do um uh, it, Let's see if I do them tomorrow. Who knows? Because then tomorrow night, I have a big birthday party. I got invited to Quad's birthday party. And we couldn't bring no plus ones. It's like personalized. So no plus ones, like exclusive. So I'm excited to go celebrate her party with her or her birthday with her. Because Quad be turning up. Quad be turning the fuck up. And I hope like other girls are there like Dr. Contessa, who I love. Speaking of Dr. Contessa, so I went on a rant recently about United Healthcare canceling my insurance. Like I signed up for insurance. I signed up for auto pay. Like I remember signing up for auto pay. I missed one payment. These people canceled my insurance and I was away filming. Like you guys watch my vlogs. You guys know I'm always in and out. So I was away for a good like four weeks like just going in and out you know and I didn't check my mail but at the same time for me I'm like I, I'm on auto pay so I didn't think to check anything these niggas canceled my insurance and I've been waiting for them to reactivate my insurance I paid my late thing anyway so I went on a rant talking about that on Instagram and saying damn like I need my pussy appointment like I have to go check my boobun it's time for my annual boobun appointment. You know, I want to see the boobun is functioné. You know, besoin make sure boobun la la functioné bien functioné. What's going on? They don't cancel my motherfucking insurance. So Dr. Contessa was like, "I'll do your pap smear." That's so sweet. So if I see her at dinner tomorrow, I'm like, "Girl, so when we doing that pap? <laughs> girl, when you gonna spread this pussy open and examine it, girl?" <laughs> um, it's just nice to know, like, black women be out there like standing up for black women. Like you gonna stand in the gap for me, you gonna check my pussy out since this motherfucking um, insurance wanna play games. But you know what I did peep though? My free New York insurance is still active. So you know what, y'all wanna play around? Y'all wanna play around and not take my $503 monthly? Fine with me. I will go up to New York. I have to go to New York at the end of the month anyway. And I'm gonna set up an appointment and I'm gonna get my pussy checked for free. Good afternoon y'all, it is 7.23 actually, good evening. 7.23, a Saturday. Uh, just did my makeup. I gotta still blend out a couple things. Still gotta put my lips on. But I'm about to curl my hair. Curl my hair. Come on in, girl. You curl my hair, child. Um, about to go party with Quad. Quad, she got it, she got it. Miss Quad, she got it, she got it, yes. Um, Kendall's actually gonna come here so we can go together. The party starts at eight. <laughs> but you know, we're gonna be a little late because black people ain't never on time. Black people ain't never on time, okay? So I'm gonna do my quick curl method, child. It's gonna be a little ghetto, but you know, it is what it is. But y'all, while I curl my hair, I wanted to talk to y'all about this freaking documentary that I just watched on Netflix called Our Father. Please, please, please watch this freaking Netflix documentary. It is insane. So the, net, the documentary starts off with one girl, can't remember her name, but she's basically the girl who this is centered around. Um, she knew that uh, her mother had fertility issues um, and had to get inseminated to find her, uh, to have her. So in her 40s, like, I think either somebody gave her a D I I don't know if she said her husband gave her a DNA test for her birthday or something like that. And she's like, you know what, let me take it and let me see if I have any siblings out there. Um, her mother told her, she said when she... 
she says she always wondered if she had siblings out there and her mother told her that um, when you get inseminated that the donors they don't use a donor more than three times so she was like you know I want to see if I have my two if I have two other siblings out there child she did this 23 and me test and 11 siblings popped up just 11 and she was like wait a minute something ain't right and she went back to her mom and she was like mom i thought you told me that your donor could only be used three times and her mom was like yeah that's what i was told and she's like well i did this dna test and i have 10 siblings that are showing up as me on 23 and me and I feel like 23andMe was popular, I think, like, at the beginning, like, 2010, around that time, like, 2009, 2010, like, the early 2010s. Like, that's when it started to get really, really popular and people were going on it. And so she started reaching out to them. And she said, as she was reaching out to the siblings, she told her mom, she said, you know what? It'd be so funny. What if, like, it'd be so funny if we all had the same dad and our dad was that was actually dr klein the the doctor who inseminated you and she said that in a joking manner but almost immediately she caught herself and she's like wait a minute like this really might be what it is make a long story short <laughs> make a long story short as she reached out to these siblings through 23 and me and she was asking them questions about like who the doctor was that inseminated their mother. It was all the same freaking doctor, Dr. Klein. I think that's his last name. So little by little, they start to tell you the stories of her siblings. Mind you, I think they all live in like Indianapolis, can't remember the city. But mind you, this doctor was like a pioneer in fertility. like. He was a doctor that, he was a specialist that doctors all over the country would send women who had infertility issues to because he was like, he was that dude. Like he was the one, like if you need to get pregnant, he's your guy. So you start hearing all these people's stories. There's this one lady who said that she went to him with her husband and that her husband um, her, um, I don't know what her issue was or what the husband's issue was, but basically like her husband came with her to the doctor's appointment um, with his sperm. So their entire lives, they thought that their child was theirs. Come to find out, they have a DNA test and their child is not theirs. That's not their child. There was this one lady who said she would go to the appointments by herself. Um, and um, she said she found it very odd that whenever she would go to the office that he was the only one who would greet her and that like, you know, there would be a little minute, there would be a little moment of her being in the office by herself, you know, with her legs up, like waiting for him to come, you know, inseminate her. And she was like, you know, once she realized that her child was not her husband's or that her child was not from a donor, that it was from a doctor, she's like, my God, like, so that means like, while I was sitting there with my legs up in the doctor's office waiting for him to come inject me with what I thought was sperm from a donor, this man was going to the bathroom, jacking off and coming back and putting his cum in me. You know, like it just makes you think like, and, and one of the women said this, she said she had, um, one of the women said she had 15 treatments until she finally got pregnant. She said, this man, this man, you know what it me 15 times, which is so true because this man is <laughs> injecting his sperm in you without your consent. Yo, as you watch the documentary, the siblings are piling up. And I think when it was first 10, when it was first like 10, he was like, oh, it shouldn't be more than 10. Like they caught up with him and he's like, oh, it shouldn't be more than 10. And please, like, I don't want anybody to know about this, but it shouldn't be more than 10. Child, before they knew it, it was 21. Then it's 30. Then it's 40. And 
the girl, the, the daughter that first found out about this, she writes a letter to the attorney general. She writes a letter to the, to the governor, the state governor. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. Everybody turned a blind eye because everybody loved him. He was this well-known specialist. He also was an elder in the church. Like, this man had, a, had basically like a cult-like following between, you know, state state representatives to people in the church like people were backing him and when she realized that the law wasn't going to do anything she went to a journalist it took two years of this journalist like broadcasting the story for finally and then and for the, the journalist not only to be broadcasting the story but also for the journalist to you know contact state you know state state officials and for them to finally respond bruh they couldn't charge the man with because apparently because there was no sexual connotation to it which you're shitting me because this man was jacking off you know what i mean like you have to be aroused he was arousing himself as these innocent women would sit in his office, he was arousing himself so that he could go put his sperm in them without their consent. And then they're like, yeah. And then like he, they, he, he had their consent to inseminate them. So they're like, yeah, in their state, they can't charge him with that. And then like by the end of the documentary, they also show you that um, there's no federal law that says that, um, that um, inseminating someone um, with a donor that they didn't consent to, they, they don't have that, it's not illegal. Like, it's crazy, like, y'all, y'all have to watch this document. Like, it's like, I'm just giving y'all footnotes, but when I tell you, like, I watched this documentary this morning and my heart sank with every story that came forward and he had no remorse. He did not care. And he even used the Bible. He said, uh, Jeremiah 1 verses 5. I think he was like, before I knew you, before you, before you were formed, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. He was like, you know, that God, God allowed this to happen. Basically like using the Bible to justify what he did and playing God. Like it, like it is... Bro, as I'm, as, I'm, as I'm saying this, like, I am so disturbed. Like, I'm, I'm so disturbed. And the last story was one of, one of his children. And Andrew, he says in the documentary, he doesn't recognize any of these people as his children. One of his children, this woman was 47 years old. She said that she was contacted by the, the first daughter who led the charge on this. She was contacted by her in 20 on 23 and me and she's like, no, no. But then she talked to her mother more and she was like, wait a minute, like this really, this really might be it. And she was saying how it destroyed her because her dad really thought like he was her father. He also went to the appointments and he gave his sperm and he, his sperm was not used. And she was saying how growing up, uh, when she grew older, she had infertility issues. He was her infertility doctor. Mind you, also throughout the, he was also an OBGYN. And because, you know, her mother had such a great experience with him get, uh, getting her pregnant, he became the family OBGYN. <laughs> Imagine that. You have to think about the fact that for the last 30 some odd years, you had this, your father sticking his fingers into your vagina, like vagina. Like it's like, the documentary is insane. It is insane and oh my God. Like, they were even talking about the fact that like, there, was, there was two siblings who were saying how they knew each other before they knew they were siblings. Their, their kids were in the same school. 
their daughters were playing together whole time had no idea that they were each other's cousins these two little girls that their that their mothers were sisters imagine like being at a point where now as this is unfolding you're praying to god that every time a new sibling pops up you're like my god prayerfully it's not somebody i fucked prayerfully it's not somebody i fucked prayerfully it's not somebody that i i dated like like it like it's disgusting and then like geographically they were showing you most of his like basically 90% of his children that he created you know were all within a 25 mile radius of where he lived some of them just 2 minutes away some of them like he he had visited them as they were children going over praying for them cuz he was an elder in the, in the local church like it's like there's so many Like, I'm disturbed just even talking about this because, like, as a Christian, I really have a problem with people using God for sinister reasons and for selfish reasons to scam God's people or to violate God's people. And it just, it, it never ceases to amaze me how people will find new ways to use God's word in vain to abuse other people for their personal gain. Like it just, it never ceases to amaze me. Never ceases to amaze me. Mind you, this man was married with four kids of his own. His wife and his kids backed him up. All supported him. Mind you, he kept saying, "Oh, I mean, I I did this sparingly." <laughs> By the end of the documentary, they had, they said they, they, uh, they found at least 91 siblings. That's people who spoke up. You gotta imagine there's so many people who didn't wanna speak up. There was one girl who said like, um, she said when, when she was first contacted, she was like, uh-uh, I, I need, I need, she didn't, I need a moment to process this. Her world just kept, like, they were saying how every time they had to break the news to a new sibling, you knew you were about to ruin somebody's life. Then on top of that, all the siblings had autoimmune diseases. And come to find out, you know, when you're a donor, when you're a sperm donor, you can't qualify to be a sperm donor if you have certain diseases. So this man was violating even that, knowing he had these diseases and the state couldn't get him on nothing didn't want to get him on nothing the judge was like listen you know since this is your first offense you know we believe in leniency girl what this man spent 40 years 40 years women like putting his sperm into women's bodies without their consent like it's just and you guys who have been following me for a long a long time you guys know i am a victim of you guys know that and to see how again this is another example of why women don't come forward what's the point might as well just take somebody to civil court get a civil get a civil suit sue you for millions because the state isn't gonna lock you up they don't care the law does not care like in the um in the documentary, they're showing you how like there was a state prosecutor who's like, listen, like we can't charge him for. Did he? According to the law, he didn't necessarily anybody. He had their consent and there was no force. So again, it's like, you know, <clears throat> doesn't just look like force. It doesn't, it's not always violent. There are so many ways to engage in sexual acts with people without their consent. And this was that. And the fact that he did it over a hundred times and was not given, the, the justice was, he paid a $500 fine and that was it. Not even community service, nothing. $500 fine, that was it. Slap on the wrist. Like it's, ins please watch Our Father on Netflix. 
Insane, insane. All right, y'all done see my little ghetto curl. Um, child, this is just gonna have to do, child. Um, this is gonna have to do. Just gonna have to do a do, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. It's giving. First of all, do y'all like this hair color? I think this is my favorite hair color that I've done lately. Um, like I wanted to be, I wanted it to be like a color that was close to my skin tone. So I don't know, it's not an auburn. I don't know, but I really like it. I like it. I like this this skin tone hair. Um, all right, y'all, let's go get dressed and let's go on ahead to this party. Okay, y'all, this is a dress chai. I got these gold perplex heels on, this leather green dress. When did I break this mirror like this? What's going on? Um. Anyways, as if. This is how we going to the party. This is how we going to the party. This is how we going to the party. I called Kendall. Kendall has not answered his phone. I don't know what the hell going on. <laughs> With his ass. But I'm hungry and I'm ready to go. Like I purposely did not eat a lot today because I knew I was going to eat at this party. So. Hurry the fuck up. A bitch is hungry. Yes, sir. Chuck, where you at? I'm coming, girl. I'm coming. What? What's going on? No. Um. So, I have to make sure my dogs is all right. Nobody poop in the cage because, you know, I don't know what we about to do. Try to make sure everybody was good. Okay, now. Poop when I come home. Okay. Okay. Make sure they ain't getting into no weed, either. Yeah, exactly. Hey, what you got on, Jesse? Because I, I, I got a little two-piece on. I got me a leather dress on. It's, it's it's short, it's like, it's, it's giving summertime. It's, it's cute. Something that, okay. you know, you can vibe to. Okay, cool. Ooh, I just hope, like, as soon as we get there, that the hoarders are just being passed around, child. Just pass the hoarders, because it's, this started at 8 o'clock. It's 8.17. By the time Kendall get here, it's going to be, like, 8.30. So, just, just pass the hoarders, please. Ooh, y'all. Ken, Kendall got TVs in the back of his car. Who be sitting back here, Kendall? Who? Nobody. Nobody, baby. Who be watching this TV, Chuck? Shoot. You got cable in here? Uh-huh. So what, what can I watch? Like Netflix? No, we gotta put, uh, what you call it? We gotta put a DVD in. Oh, okay. Yeah. He got money. Whatever you can control up here, you can control back here. This is the executive car, so you have a driver. And you control your car, and your driver just drives. She's so pretty. He got money. He got money. He got money. He got money. Yes, he does. Yes. This is nice. A boy one. Oh, this is so pretty. Kendall made us late, but that's cool. Cause guess why? Guess why I get to sit next to? Hey, Byron. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so we ain't got no avatars tonight. We're gonna get some crab claws. It says we're gonna get um, crab claws or squash. Or salmon. We have to wait for squash. Wait, y'all. Why Jesse got me saying Atlanta? Atlanta. So when everybody, when everybody asks me where I'm from, I'm like, well, I'm from New York, but I live in Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> I live in Atlanta. <laughs> I hate you for that. I'm going to be doing that shit. Over Atlanta, there. yes. I live in Atlanta. She'll be like, Jesse is rubbing off on you. <laughs> look at, look at what, look at. If I have that, there'll be no salmon. Literally, like, you film. Wow. My friend hates it. She said it feels like a little robot. But like, no, but like that fits perfectly okay, in your on. bag. That's why I didn't bring my vlogging camera. I'm using my phone. But the only bad thing is it does really bad in low light. So I got to turn my flash on. Don't be blinded, Jess. Okay. 
I'm gonna flip it. And can you see us? Oh, you can see us. You see, you see, see us. Here. We in Atlanta. Atlanta girls. <laughs> Wednesday, May 18th. It is Haitian Flag Day. <laughs> May 18th, Haitian Flag Day. Okay, so shout out to all my Haitians. It's Haitian Heritage Month. Today is Haitian Flag Day. And guess what? I'm headed to Times Square because Wyclef two days ago decided he wanted to have a big billboard in Times Square. So here's what's really stressing me out. When things happen at the last minute like that, and also I had plans to go to Canada tomorrow for my cousin Danny's baby shower. She's having her first child this weekend. So Wyclef says, hey, I wanna have our billboard in Times Square on Wednesday. So now I gotta buy a flight to Times Square to New York last minute, I had to change my outgoing flight to Canada from Atlanta airport to LaGuardia. And then yesterday I got another call. Hey Jess, uh, we wanna hire you to do this um, Martin Reboot special uh, that's gonna be on BET and Kevin Hart's company is the one that is hiring you to do it. So, now I gotta push back my flight to go to New York tomorrow, pushing it back to Friday night, which is gonna be a red eye from LA. Now I'm gonna be flying to LA tomorrow. During Haitian Heritage Month. It's, it's a lot going on <laughs> during Haitian Heritage Month. Like, it's a lot, like I'm very thankful, but I feel like sometimes like things just be coming to me like that. And I'd be thinking, my God, like, what, what if I was pregnant? Or what if I what if I had a toddler? Like, what would I do? What would I do? Like, my mom doesn't live here. Like, this is why I got to hurry up and make some money so I can move my mama to Atlanta, get her her own house, drop me a baby, give it to her, too. Because she said that. She's like, girl. Like, my mom literally said this without, like, even asking me permission. She was talking to one of my friends. She was like, yeah, when Jessica have it. Have a baby, I'm just going to take the baby, that's it. And I'll give it to her when she's ready, when I feel like she's ready. And I remember thinking, um... But now I'm like, yeah, girl, that's, yeah, mm-hmm. That sounds like a plan, girl, mm -hmm. That definitely sounds like a vibe, child. Because the way things would be coming up, no, this is ridiculous. Like, so, yeah, y'all. So, I have nothing packed because yesterday I was in Zooms all freaking day, which was great. Uh, I got another job offer yesterday, which is amazing. Like, I... I'm going to just say this. A lot of y'all know, like, I tried to have my own podcast last year. That didn't work out because people don't want to be doing 
people don't want to pull their weight. But anyway, that didn't work out. Don't care why it didn't work out. It didn't work out. And then since then, I've, I've gone on to do like Madame Noir, Listen to Black Women, which is doing really good right now. But I got approached to do a podcast by a by two major companies that are working together on a specific podcast for a show. And that's what I want to do. I want to do show reviews. Like you guys know, I if you know me, know me, if you've been following me, you know I love doing show reviews. So this opportunity is perfect. And um, it would be based in New York, which is great, I have family there. It would be based in New York. It would be an eight to nine episode podcast for the first season it this is a huge opportunity and I cannot believe it just came to me but then again I did tie this weekend I was like damn I'm getting a lot of good news I sat down with a manager finally yesterday a really really good manager in the in the business I, I'm just like oh my god this is good like I I'm getting closer like remember I said this is my year like I said this in one of my first vlogs this is my year like 2022 is my year um i don't think it's gonna be the best year of my life but i think it, when i look back on 2022 i'm gonna say wow like this was a very pivotal year in my life this is when a lot of pieces came together so that i could do the rest of all the historic things that i'm gonna do with my life going forward so when i become an egot i'm gonna be able to say yeah 2022 was the year that set me up to be an egot my Emmy, my Grammy, my Oscar, my Tony. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. I'm really, really excited. Um, I'm actually gonna wear this jumpsuit to Times Square. Oh, I found a laser company yesterday. I didn't get to vlog, but um, I had my first laser session yesterday. I really wish I would have videotaped my chest because I had let all the hair grow and it was really, really bad. But I had laser here. I'm really looking forward to this hyperpigmentation going away as the hair disappears. I did laser under my arms. I did laser on my happy trail, uh, my legs. It hurt like hell. You know, I think maybe it was a some of different things. It was my first time lasering and also is the first day of my period. Don't know why I decided to do this on the first day of my period. My period was supposed to come a couple days earlier, but y'all see how I be moving. I think my body is just like fed up with me. Like my body's like, girl, okay, when we go on vacation again? Cause it's time, it's time, bitch. It's time. And I, and I actually was trying to do a last minute trip to St. Martin next week, but I'm gonna stay longer in Canada because I have to fly out there later than I really wanted to. So yeah, y'all. Anyway, let me pack and let's head to the airport. Uh, I'm at the Newark Airport. It is 5 p.m. May 18th, Wednesday. I'm waiting for my driver. My flight got delayed an hour, so I'm really like trying to wonder why my driver is not here. So we're by Times Square now, and uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to meet with Clef. They started already? Uh, we're gonna start already? Yeah, for, um, for Um, no, it's barricaded. I don't think we can go through the barricade. Is it a place I can walk to? Oh, we're there. Oh, we're there? Where? Yeah. Where is he? Uh, he should be like just by the car coming to us. Alright. Hey. Oh, no. Everybody left. Want to spot in front of your camper? Hi. Hey, what's up? Yeah. How are you? <laughs> okay. So. Oh. We're in Times Square. <laughs> yes. Hi. Sure. Clap. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
Yo, how are you? Jesse? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say that I've been following you everywhere. Yeah, I love you so much. Oh, thank like, you. Just you doing your thing. Thank you. you. Believe that a Haitian woman can make it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Of course we can.
until four o'clock I just found a chair and sat in it y'all I sat next to the mind you there weren't that many chairs available so I had to sit next to like this this guy who had his feet out like I don't see how anybody could be in the airport bare feet feet were disgusting and I think his mom like was on another side of me and she was fucking weird, like, she kept, like, touching my lap, like, it just was the weirdest thing, but I somehow went to sleep, holding on to my belongings, and, um, so anyway, so just made the TSA, and I'm like, let me go to the Sky Lounge, child, let me go sat down in the Sky Lounge, girl, why the Sky Lounge ain't open until 5 o'clock? The Sky Lounge is not open until 5 o'clock, child. I am so annoyed. <laughs> annoyed. And I gotta pee, and I'm not gonna pee in the regular bathroom. I need to pee in the Sky Lounge bathroom. Shit. And then I need to eat breakfast. Um, and I also need to shoot this video um, using this camera for BET. I have some content to shoot for them. <sighs> Lord. Mm. Child, I'm gonna go to LAX. I'm gonna stay with a friend of mine and go do this. This uh oh shit! Did I tell you guys I got a last minute job from Heartbeat Productions? Yes, honey, we making coins. We doing what we gotta do, child. We making progress and. During Haitian Heritage Month. During Haitian Heritage Month, yeah. During ha Haitian Heritage Month, child. We doing it, bitch. Oh, no. And I, you know what sucks, too? Because I got this like, last minute. Child, I'm all the way in 39B. <laughs> Have y'all seen that video of that girl making fun of her boyfriend? Taking her on a trip. She's like, oh, I thought he had got his first class, but no. Nah. We all the way to 38 birds. I was crying. Let me make sure I checked. Um, I have my upgrades checked, child, just in case I'm, something free up. You know what I'm saying? What's up, y'all? So I'm in LA. I landed at 10. It is 11.49. When I landed, I got a text message saying that the special that I'm supposed to be filming tomorrow got pushed back. So I literally just rushed from New York to LA for what? Like I literally was supposed to fly into Canada today to go be with my family. Now I'm in LA until tomorrow night 
for what mind you last night i rushed to the airport got there at 12 because i thought i could check into the delta sky lounge the sky lounge was closed at jfk so i had to sleep by baggage claim for four hours until i can finally check in and get into the sky lounge at five Like, I'm so upset that I'm not upset. That's upset I am. That's how upset I am. But it's, it's, all right. So, I'm gonna shower, get myself together, go have lunch with a friend of mine. Prayerfully, I do end up doing the special. If not, it is what it is. to go to the airport to go catch a flight to Canada. I ended up not doing anything for Heartbeat Productions. Um, and let me not say it wasn't blank because I did get to spend time with friends while I've been here. I stayed with a friend of mine and we had a good time. So now I'm about to head to the airport on a red eye to go be with my family in Canada for my cousin's first baby shower because I wasn't gonna miss that. So yeah, so let's go ahead and go to Canada. <laughs>
So yeah. All right, y'all. Probably gonna order food. Soon as I can, and just go to sleep because this is about to be like a six-hour flight. Literally six hours. Présentement 7h30 heure locale. Veuillez rester assis avec votre ceinture de sécurité bouclée et vos bagages rangés jusqu'à ce que le commandant éteigne les consignes lumineuses. All right. Dad, it's your baby shower day. Well, I'm in Canada and we're about to go inside to my cousin's baby shower. Oh, I can see my cousins. Well, I feel a way because Donita is leaving me for a motherhood. It looks 
It looks like a big stomach. You look pregnant.